Hey guys, it's Kevin again. This is going to be another movie review, and this one I'm going to be reviewing is actually a TV movie. Um, it is the third movie in the Dollinganger series, the sequel to Pells of the Wind, If There Be Thorns. Now, If There Be Thorns was a movie that I was definitely looking forward to, um, especially after Pells of the Wind. If you guys know, I absolutely love Pells of the Wind, which I just rewatched that yesterday. It was so good, and I I, I loved I love Pells of the Wind. It's such a great movie. It, it really was the perfect sequel to Flowers in the Attic, and I was looking forward to see what If There Be Thorns was going to do. However, um, I was really skeptical about it as well, because as a uh, I saw her see clips and things like that. I, was, I got kind of worried about the movies and very underwhelmed as well. And after watching it, there be thorns. What I think of it, this is by far the worst movie in the Dolan Ganger series. It has a lot of problems. There are a lot of things I did not like about this movie, and it could have been a lot better. And honestly, you know what I thought of while watching this movie? I kind of thought that Pels the Wind would have been the perfect ending. I understand why V.C. Andrews continued. Actually, I do know why she continued. She continued because those books were very, were bestsellers, and a lot of people read them, and she created two more books. Fine, why did Lifetime need to continue the series? Like, do they not realize that the series gets ridiculous after Pels in the Wind? Like, and I'm not kidding. This movie is completely ridiculous. Now, the plot's actually really cool. I love the plot, and it could have, and it actually sounds a lot better than it actually is. The plot of If There Be Thorns, basically, after Kathy and Chris, after Kathy and Chris basically um, defeated um, Corinne and put her in the mental institution, they are now living with their two sons, Dory and Bart, and they're just trying to live, you know, just, they're trying to live a normal life. They're trying to live a normal life now. Um, Kathy is teaching ballet, and she has this, you know, she's teaching ballet now, and Christopher is, we don't know much about what Christopher is doing, but basically, all kind of goes to hell. I mean, their their sons are completely unaware of what's going on. Of course, um, Christopher is their uncle, and they don't really know what's going on with them and everything. So, basically, they see that there's this neighbor that starts moving next door. And the, the other thing about this movie is that it doesn't focus on Kathy and Christopher. It focuses more on Jory and Bart. Jory's kind of a social... I mean, Bart's... Jory is this big, like, you know, he's this very popular in school. Everyone loves him. He has a girlfriend, Melanie. And Bart's really a social outcast, and... One day there are these there are these neighbors that move in, and of notes to them, their neighbors are actually Corinne and this guy John Amos, and basically they go to visit Corinne and John Amos because they want to suspect what's you know they want to see what's going on with these neighbors because they're very suspicious and they're just really creepy to them. So they go talk to them, and basically they end up revealing secrets to them and makes them go crazy, and basically the movie turns to shit and the movie gets ridiculous. And that's basically a plot of There Be Thorns. Now, the plot sounds a lot better than it is. The thing about this movie that does not work, and I'm going to talk about the things that don't work in this movie. First of all, let's get to the stuff that I did like about this movie. The acting is really good in this movie. Definitely the acting's really good here. Um, the main star here is Mason Cook, because as I said, this movie does not focus on Kathy and Christopher. Uh, it focuses a lot more on Bart and Jory. I can understand that they wanted to do that. They wanted to show the reactions more. They wanted to do sort of like a parallel of Flowers in the Attic. I do understand that, but this is not at all the same story of Flowers in the Attic. It's very different, and it's a very different kind of movie. In fact, the tone of the movie really threw me off. I'll get to that, but Mason Cook is Bart. At first, I think th throughout the whole movie, he did an amazing job. I mean, really, he did. He... I saw someone saying that he has a very bright future. I have to agree. I think this kid has a very bright future. I think he's going to get some really good roles in the future. He did a really good job in this role. And as silly as his character got, he really, he never lost, um, you know, his acting. His acting was still really good throughout the whole time. I thought he did a really good job, and I thought he was really good overall. Definitely, he was really good. Um... Rachel Carpini as a uh, Rachel Carpani as a uh, Kathy. I thought she was really good. Now she was not as good as um, as Rose McGiver. Rose McGiver was was amazing as Kathy. I thought she was really good. But here's my biggest problem with Kathy's character is that she has this huge scene midway, to, you know, like towards the end of the movie. And the problem is she doesn't have a lot to do in this movie. Her biggest thing in this movie is a few things. Um, She's teaching ballet, and there is this girl that they want to adopt, Cindy. They end up adopting her. I really like that storyline overall. I definitely really enjoyed it. I thought she was really good. There were a couple times where I thought her acting was just a little bit wooden. Like, there were some times where I'm like, why aren't you reacting more to this? Like, 
especially because Rose McGivern did such a good job as Kathy, and Rachel Carpani at times, it felt really like she wasn't into it. I felt like there were times where she wasn't as into the movie as she could have been, and I thought she was good in a lot of scenes, but there were some scenes where I'm just like, why aren't you reacting as much? It didn't make sense to me. Um, Jason Lewis as Christopher, I thought he was good overall, but he has, like, nothing to do in this movie. He doesn't. He doesn't have his own individual plot. We don't know much about Christopher's life. We don't know much about what's going on with him. His role in this movie is to be Kathy's wife and to be a sort of father to Bart and Jory. Um, same with Jedediah Goodcare. He does- Goodacre. He doesn't have much to do as Jory. I mean, Jory, I really like his character. I like that he is, um, supportive of Bart. I like that he tries to be a good sibling to him. I like, they, we do get some good stuff with Jory. I mean, we see that he um, is in ballet, and he has this girlfriend who is um, planning on going to college, and, you know, he wants to possibly go with her. But he also has this mother who um, is actually, he knows about Julian, and I think that was really well done the way they did that. He knows about Julian, and basically he realizes that his mother wants him back. His mother wants him back, and I thought that was really well done. My problem is he doesn't have too much to do in this movie, and I would have wanted him to have a lot more to do, because I actually really like Jory's character, and I don't feel like they did enough with him, but they really didn't. Heather Graham was fantastic in this movie. I love what they did with Corinne's character. This is the movie that made us care more for Corinne, but there are so many things that don't make sense in this movie, and that really goes with the writing. Let's get into the, the, the directing here. The direct Directing is very different from the last two movies. Now, I understand they change directors each movie. The first and two movies, though, it, they pretty much had the same sort of tone. I mean, they were really dark, very gothic. This is a lot weirder and a lot more creepy, especially when the first shot of the movie is Bart getting bullied and then going up to the treehouse and looking at these bugs. Like, that's the kind of movie you're watching. And it really threw me off, definitely. The directing was definitely really good throughout the movie, but it just really threw me off, and I didn't like the tone. I didn't like the tone of this movie. I didn't like the horror part of this movie, because the Ganger series, while they are very gothic, they were never meant to be horror movies. These are not horror movies. These are movies about survival, and they're thrillers. They're thrillers at best. They are not horror movies, and I didn't like that this movie tried to be, like, a horror movie, because if you're trying to be a horror movie, then you completely fail, because this movie's not scary, it's not scary, and it's not, it's not scary, it's just weird, it really is, the things that happen in this movie, they're just weird, um, the worst part of this movie, though, the thing that ruined this movie and this series is the writing, First of all, the beginning of the movie, there are so many plot holes that are unanswered. Why is Corinne back from the mental institution? How did she get out of the mental institution? That's why I want to know. Like, is she suddenly clean? Were they like, okay, you can go now? Like, that doesn't make sense to me. You think with someone as crazy as Corinne, they just keep her there. I mean, we saw how crazy she was in Pells in the Wind. She is fucking crazy, and there's no explanation as to why she's back. There's no explanation as to why she, you know, is there. There's no explanation to any of that, and it really was disappointing. Oh, one other thing about the acting. The guy that played John Amos, awesome. I mean, he is a terrible character, but he was so creepy in the role, and he did a great job, definitely. Um, but the biggest problem with the writing is the, t is the way this movie goes. Okay, the first two movies. Now, I know what you guys are going to say. They're stupid, you don't take them seriously, fine. Pellas in the Wind and Flowers in the Attic, they're realistic. They're at least somewhat realistic. This movie is not realistic. The things that happen in this movie would not happen in real life. And that's one of the things I loved about Pellas in the Wind, is that the thing, that entire movie was so much more realistic than the first movie. If you guys see on Letterboxd, I gave that movie an A. I'm not joking, it really is that good. I absolutely love Pellas in the Wind because it could be a terrible movie, and it's not. This, though, completely butchers that. It's like, no, let's not do that. Let's go completely unrealistic. And it tries to be, like, bigger. It tries to be bigger and it doesn't work. I mean, there's so many scenes. After Bart finds out about his family, he becomes the most annoying thing ever. He starts to become more curious of his family. He starts to even become a psychopath. There's a scene where his sister's talking about his family and he tries to drown her. And it's extremely stupid and extremely ridiculous because the other movies did not have any of that. 
and the whole time just like just put him in a mental institution seriously he's fucked up he's crazy put him in there that's what you should do but they don't do that to him what they do is they send him to a therapist who offers shock therapy it's really stupid and I didn't like it at all I thought the writing was really stupid and then we're into spoilers now because I really want to talk about what I thought ruined this movie Spoilers here. Okay, when the whole thing with Malcolm makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, the whole time in the movie, they're talking about Malcolm and the guy that supposedly started this whole thing. I didn't care one bit about it. And when when um when Bart was like, "I'm not Bart," I'm like, "What the hell does that mean? Like, are you possessed by Malcolm? Is he the one that's doing this?" That didn't make any sense. They never explained it, and I didn't get it at all. It made no sense to me. But now we're going to get two spoilers here, because I want to talk about what I didn't understand about this movie. Why does the third half of this movie suddenly focus on Kathy? It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. When you're focusing on Bar and Jory for most of the movie, why do we choose to focus on Kathy all of a sudden? After Kathy got injured, the movie suddenly focused on her. And I understand that Seeds of Yesterday is going to focus on Kathy again, but... And Seeds of Yesterday looks really good, actually. I think Seeds of Yesterday can fix this series, things like that, but... Why do we suddenly focus on Kathy? I understand Kathy has a huge scene with Corinne, but here's the thing. Kathy's barely in the movie. My favorite thing about this movie is Kathy and Christopher. I mean, they're still, they have really good chemistry, as I said. Rachel Carpini and Jason Lewis, they have really good chemistry, and they're still trying to do whatever they can to make sure they don't end up like Corinne. There's this great scene where Kathy's in the attic, and Corinne, and Chris was like, you don't play on putting our kids in the attic, do you? And it talks about how they don't want to do this, and they want to have a good life for their kids, and I thought that was really well done when we saw that. I definitely really enjoyed that, and that was definitely one of my, fa my favorite part about the movie by far. Um, but... When Kathy's, when Kathy and, um, and Corinne got into that fire, I was like, we did this in the second movie, we're seriously doing this again, it was ridiculous. When John Amos became crazy, I mean, it's understandable, I understand why he was crazy, but just the end of the movie was so stupid. And then what Jory saw at the end, what the fuck was that, like seriously? What did he see at the end? Was that like the ghost of Malcolm? Was that Bart as like a little boy? I did not understand that whatsoever, it was stupid to me, it didn't make any sense, and I did not understand it, it was really dumb, definitely. Definitely. Um, cinematography here is fantastic. Cinematography here is probably the best cinematography in the entire in the entire series, probably. I mean the cinematography is gorgeous. Um the makeup that Heather Graham went under was amazing. The fact they made her look old, I thought was awesome the way they did that. Um, the production in general was great as well. The editing was fine, I guess. I mean, the editing's all over the place. It really is. This movie is all over the place. It goes off the rails, and after the scene where Bart drowned Cindy, I'm just like, I can't take this movie seriously anymore, because I wanted to take this series seriously. But after that, I don't know if I can take this seriously anymore. Like, I was just like, I might just quit. Like, when he drowned Cindy, I'm like, I might just turn this movie off right now. Like, I'm like, why am I watching this over the Shameless finale? Why I did that is because I love Pells in the Wind. I want to see how this series continued it, because I thought this movie would be as good as that. And it wasn't, and it really was disappointing. It was definitely disappointing. There were a lot of things this movie could have done that could have made it a lot better if we would have focused less on Bart becoming crazy and focused more on just how this affected Bart I understand it affects him in that way but the way that it affected Jory I thought was a lot better I mean sure Jory turns against his parents and everything but it didn't turn him into a psychopath it didn't you know try to turn the series into a horror movie it really does not work when you do that when you try to turn it into a horror movie it didn't work whatsoever um, the ending was stupid, and just everything was going on with Bart in the second half of the movie, I thought was re really stupid, and I thought they would fix it in the third half, but they really didn't, I understand when Bart, but Bart just suddenly became normal again, when he became normal, he just suddenly became normal, there was no explanation, there was no, oh, I was, it, I was fixed when I went to the attic, there was none of that, nothing fixed him. I mean, you're telling me that the shock therapy actually fixed him? Like, that's complete bullshit. There's no way that that fixed him. That's ridiculous that that fixed him. 
So overall, guys, I was really disappointed by it, Therapy Thorns. Definitely, I was very disappointed by it. It could have been a lot better than it was. I think that, honestly, the whole movie, I'm just like, this is completely unnecessary. The whole time I'm watching it, I didn't see the point of continuing the series. Do I want to see Seeds Yesterday? Yeah, I want to see how they finish the series. I love the first two movies. This movie sucked. I'm being honest. This movie sucked. It really did. All the good stuff they choose not to focus on. It really sucks that they did that. So overall, guys, 2.5 out of 5 or a C+. Like, I'm serious. I really did not like this movie. 2.5 out of 5 or C. I didn't like it. It's it's stupid. They should not have made it unrealistic. If they would have kept the realistic tone of the first two movies had it, would have enjoyed it a lot more. But this movie did not have that. It ruined the series and really just took it to a whole other level that did not need to be. Seeds of Yesterday looks really good. It looks like it's not going to be ridiculous. It looks like it's actually going to have a good story. And I'm looking forward to seeing how it concludes the series. But let me know what you guys thought of If There Be Thorns. Did it ruin the series for you? Did you find it to be ridiculous? Did... Are you going to watch Seeds Yesterday? Uh, trust me, guys. There are points this morning where I'm like, I don't know if I want to continue with this series. Like, I don't know if Seeds Yesterday is going to be better. It looks better. However, I'm hearing it's worse. I'm hearing that it's worse than The Therapy Thorns, which is really bad, but we'll see how it is overall. Um, do you feel like they should have just continued on Pels in the Wind? Like, I feel like Pels in the Wind, they should have just stopped. Also, I noticed this. They did not promote this movie as much, and it makes sense why. This, honestly... I can understand why they didn't promote this as much. I mean, there was nothing that they could show that would make me want to watch it. I mean, the trailers were really interesting, but notice they promoted Seeds of Yesterday a lot more than If There Be Thorns. And that's because Seeds of Yesterday seems a lot more interesting than If There Be Thorns. And If There Be Thorns just seems like the filler one. And, my, and again, I'm looking forward to the story. I'm looking forward to see what they do. I just don't really see why they should keep continuing the story. And I never wanted them to continue the story. I feel like V.C. Andrews should have never made this book and should have just left on Pels in the Way and then call it a day because Pell's the Wind was the perfect way in the series and then you do this and it does not work. Um, one other thing I will say very quickly that I did like about this, um, I did like about the movie, I do want to talk about this, um, and, and it's again a spoiler. When Corinne's talking to Kathy about how she did care for them, I can understand that. I like what they did there. I like they tried to make us care more for Corinne. I thought that was well done. But it honestly just felt really stupid. It did. It felt stupid. The whole revelation felt weird. I understand they're trying to get us to care more for Corinne. But again, you were in a mental institution. What made you not crazy anymore? What made you suddenly normal? Like, there was a scene where Kathy's like, I prayed you died in that nut farm. And I'm like... When did she get out of the nut farm? Like, why did she go there? Why didn't you send Bart to the nut farm? There are just so many plot holes, so much all over the place, and so much that did not need to happen in this movie. But that's in my review. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys saw this movie. If you have seen it, do you want to continue the series? Um, was this too much for you? Did you just go with it? I can understand if someone said you have to go with it, but here's the thing. The first two movies were so realistic and so normal, and this was so not normal that I couldn't... I, I can barely like count it as... The, the series. It feels so different from the rest of the series that I don't know if, if I want to continue the series. I'm going to I'm going to watch the last movie, but if they make any movies after that, then I'm done. Like, seriously, if they make a movie after Seeds Yesterday, I'm going to be really pissed. We'll see how Seeds Yesterday is. I don't know how it's going to be. Judging the fact that it premieres next week gets me really worried. Like, they spent no time in, like, they rushed it out. It feels like they just rushed it out here, and I really hope that's not the case. We'll see what happens. Let me know if you guys saw this movie. I'll see you guys in my next video, which we review for the season finale of Shameless. So I'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.